Broncos throwing around a lot of money on offensive linemen today. Starting with a four-year deal for Ben Powers, formerly of the Ravens. Four years, $52 million, $28.5 million guaranteed. Not all that far off from the deal that Brandon Scherf got last year. Mm -hmm. If you look at the actual specifics of it, it looks like he's going to have about a $5 million cap hit this year and about a $15 million cap hit next year. So it averages out to two years, 20 over the first two against the cap. I went back. I didn't really watch much Brent Powers last year. It's just somebody I didn't know a ton about. So when, as soon as the signing happened, I went and rewatched their game against the Broncos. Yeah. Because like, all right, let, let's let's see how I he guess, played. Yeah, I would say. And no. he played extremely well. <laughs> he is a very sound pass protector. Yeah. And I he can plays like his name. That's <laughs> I he really good reps against uh, Draymond Jones in that game. Yeah. And you watch him in pass protection, really good awareness. You know, that Broncos team brought a lot of heat last season. Mm-hmm. You see him sorting stuff out in real time, pretty good technician. And that is the type of guy that we've seen Sean Payton go after with his tiny little quarterbacks over the last 10 years or so Strong in the just middle. having a solid guy at those guard spots to just make sure that you're creating a clean pocket in those situations yep. that is was their mo in new orleans for years and it seems like they're trying to reprise that a little bit with this power signing that, no that's such a great call the uh, i wrote down just right now as you were talking i wrote Shea, sean payton o-line if you ever look at what how much resources the the saints spent an offensive line still do but especially when Sean Payton was there, and especially a guard compared to other yes. teams, right? I mean, it goes all the yeah. way back to Carl Nix and yeah. Jari Evans. I mean, all those guys. And even now, like our Andrews P is making a ton of money for them, which we could debate the prudency of that, but they've always committed and spent on those spots when he's been had any say in personnel. Yeah, no, that's exactly. And that, that's, that's Sean Payne. Sean Payne's got a lot of old school to him as far as how he thinks how teams should be built. So that they're all <laughs> Broncos fans. Get ready. I'm sure every year you guys are going to take somebody in the first three rounds, offensive line year after year after year, which I, again, my dad was a little line coach. I'm all about it. I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. But I, I loved your call right there talking about how he is a stout lineman and keeping the middle of the pocket clean. I think that has kind of been an under, I mean, we're seeing this defensive line, defensive tackle market boom. There's a lot of great players on the interior. Keeping the middle clean lets quarterbacks step up, lets quarterbacks step up and out, gives them ways. It's easier to shuffle side to side than it is to kind of go up and down. Like you have, if you have a guy coming at you front angle, all right, which way do I go? Do I go around to a D end or do I cut up to the left? But if I have a clean pocket in the middle at least, and maybe the tackle gets beat, okay. We can mitigate that. I can get outside and, and bounce out, see how Mahomes has done with his tackles the last couple of years. So I totally agree. I, I like this signing maybe more than the McGlinchey signing. Uh, I absolutely do. Yeah. Power, so power, this one, this one was good. Okay. Powers is, is 26, $28.5 million guaranteed. So you're looking at two years that you're committed to this deal. And again, you're solidifying the interior offensive line. Yep. Mike McGlinchey, five years, $87.5 million dollars. With fifty million dollars guaranteed, according to Ian Rappaport, which that's at least the first two years guaranteed, probably some into year three, for a guy who's twenty eight, has dealt with some injury issues over the last couple of years. He didn't miss any time last season, but even in camp up. he was banged up. Yeah. I think, and Brandon has pointed this out, Thorne, and I, I totally agree. Even seeing him in person a little bit and watching them, feels like he's a little lighter than he used to be. Yeah. I'm not sure the power is is quite the same as it was early in his career. I think this is a risky bet. When I saw the numbers, I was a little bit relieved that the Bears decided they did not want to pay that. I was actually kind of happy for you that the Bears didn't sign him. I've been nice about throughout this process about McGlinchey. I'm not a huge fan of his play. I think he is, like you said, he's a little light in in the butt, light in the lower half, kind of doesn't really move guys how he used to and has gotten some of that athleticism sapped. That you know, because of those injuries and kind of getting banged up, and he kind of just doesn't move, he moves 80% of what he used to. Um, I've never really been really high on him overall. I think he maxes out as kind of like an above average starter, and that's a lot of money for a guy that maxes out as an above average starter, especially one that I don't think there's much upside to tap into. He was playing in the scheme that I thought was very conducive to his skill set, so it's not like where I'm like, well, just get him to a better spot, yeah, yeah, exactly. We have seen. That so here's the difference with me and Juwan Taylor and Mike McGlinchey. One, let's throw the left tackle thing out of yeah, the, yeah, win, yeah. Out the window. Just, let's say Juwan Taylor is playing right, right tackle. tackle yep, okay, yep. for Juwan Taylor, you could absolutely talk yourself into the yep. idea that his best football is in front of him for a lot of different reasons. It's harder to do that 
with yeah. Mike McGlinchey, and you're still paying a real premium for yeah. that guy with this sort of contract. So I, I saw that and I was like, oh man. Yeah, that one's like, nice to me. But those are the sorts of deals that again, when you sign them in free agency, it's like, ah, I buyer beware. You know, like yeah. and that we see that every year. You yep. know, it gets tempted to it's so tempting to look at these and say, we're gonna get better. You know, we're gonna get so much better at that spot. And the Broncos, the only position where the Broncos have had more of a revolving door than quarterback over the last like five or six years might be right tackle. Yeah. I mean, consistently happening over and over again. So, and I know that George Payton hasn't been there that long, but locking down that spot and just saying, we got two starters, we feel good about it. I get talking yourself into mm -hmm. that, but you paid a real premium for that sort of security here. I think, I think there's, I know it just sounds like, well, or who else would you sign? But I was like, I think there's better ways to be creative about it. I get, I get they don't have a lot of drafts resources and anything. Andrew Wiley think, made half. Right. Andrew Wiley. That, that's perfect. Wiley and McGlinchey, I consider in the same tier, whether that's, Fair or not, I do. Um, that's personal, my opinion on if it. If it's not the same tier, it's half. Half. And then all those resources can be spent elsewhere. It's not like a complete roster and all that. I mean, they spent X amount of money on a backup quarterback as well and Jared Stidham, so that's interesting as well. But that, yeah, the McGlinchey, that was one of the signings that was a lot of alarm bells going off for me, especially how I consider the player, his history, and now the fit. It's kind of, that's a, that's a significant overpay to me. The concern about Caleb McGarry and what he's going to be if he were dropped into another situation, I think, is rooted in the offense that they played in in Atlanta mm -hmm. and just how often you see him truly drop back. It's not very often. No, it was like eight same, times a game. <laughs> the same thing is true with the Niners. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. a lot of the same ideas apply to Mike McGlinchey, and he's mm -hmm. getting a massive, massive deal where I don't know if Caleb McGarry's contract or Caleb McGarry's market is going to be that hot. This is one of those moments, in my opinion where it pays to play for a really good team and it yes. pays to be a former top 10 pick. You were the eighth overall pick in your draft. And whether we like it or not, that shit follows you around. It, right, and it, it seems like that is informing a little bit of what is happening right now. Yeah. And, or it's one of those where he was coming out in the draft and Sean Payton's like, man, I liked him. Yep. I really yep. liked him. I liked him coming out of Notre Dame. That shit carries over for years and years. So that's a great call too. Sorry, I'm trying to keep no, you're up with a lot of the things that are happening here. The it's Bears signed Nate Davis, which we don't know the terms on that yet, so I don't really want to throw out how I feel about it. <laughs> but they needed – oh, Did my God. See, Did you see yeah. the other signing? Yeah, I just yeah. saw that. <laughs> I was wondering who pulled Ian the trigger Rappaport on that. also reporting that the Bears are signing Tremaine Edmonds, which is – we'll get into that, I guess. Oh, All right, I'll, I'll wait to see DJ the numbers. Edwards, I'll, I'll wait to see the numbers. Okay, here we go. Elsewhere on the interior offense. Oh, actually, let's talk about Stedham very quickly here. Okay, yeah. so I was interested in what the Broncos would do at their backup quarterback spot. Because if you look at Russ's contract, there is an injury guarantee somewhere in there where I thought, okay, if things go poorly this year, is there a guy they'd be willing to turn to to just say, you know what? We're pulling the ripcord. Mm -hmm. Like you're going on the bench for the rest of the year. We'll eat the dead money next off season and we'll move on from there. So I was wondering, do they sign a high end backup that could potentially be a starter in order to plan for that potentiality? Jared Stedham at two years and 10 million doesn't really do that for me, but this is one quote unquote backup quarterback spot that I was fairly interested in for that potential timeline. Let's say it was like last year with the Dolphins signing Teddy Bridgewater a little bit where you're like, Oh, okay. That was a, that was your backup. That was your break glass in case of emergency. And then Teddy ended up getting hurt just as much as Tua. So that kind of, that kind of, and they actually ended up signing Mike white, which is interesting as well. But no, I Stidham Stidham has a lot of fans. In, in the league, a lot of coaches and personnel people love Jarrett Stidham. Uh, it's we talk about pedigree carrying over for the rest of your life. This is a former, you know, five star recruit, big name recruit. Like maybe that's what people remember. He did play fairly well at the second half of last year, but still, like, it's Jarrett Stidham. Uh, but I think that's what I, I this makes sense. Like, you, all the reasons that you laid out high end backup can come in a spot. You know, Russ getting older, Russ is another, another year older, um, and play and his play style and everything. And if he's getting beat up or whatever. However, um, Sean Payton feels about Russ. So this gives him a kind of like another option. And like you said, the break glass in case of emergency type of player uh, to maybe like shore up that position for them. All right. Speaking of Mike White, that was another spot where we talked about the Jalen Ramsey trade yesterday and the Dolphins kind of protecting themselves. Yep. 
uh, if, on the off chance that Tua gets hurt again and they have to salvage their season, no. it feels like Mike White is the guy that they're betting on. Two years up to sixteen million is yeah. what was reported, I believe, by Adam Schefter. K- key phrasing there: up the two. up to sixteen million. <laughs> yeah, up to insurance. Yeah, right there. Uh, I think they were say they. They made that nice run last year, and then that's what I think they saw enough enough of Skylar Thompson to go never again. Same exact thing. They're just no more of that. We're gonna have we're gonna get somebody that we think is competent. Mike White has had some fun games. Um, it's the same ex- exact offensive system that he's been in with the Jets, with you know with Michael Ford being with being the offensive coordinator there uh, the last couple of years, and then now he's going to uh, Mike McDaniel, same exact offense. So. Probably an easy transition for him. Got a guy that has already shown that he can step in in a pinch and play for you and at least play competently, especially a team that seems like they're trying to fire on all cylinders this year. So it makes sense that they don't want anything to go askew like it did last year. 